Video editing is the process of cutting and rearranging multiple clips or segments of video to create a new and presumably improved video. And for folks in the advanced class, it can also involve the adding of titles, animations, sound effects, music, and more. But how did it all begin? Well, it sort of started when a photographer named Edward Muybridge, Maybridge, Muybridge, apparently they didn't have normal spelling back in 1872. Anyway, he took a series of still photographs that proved once and for all that horses take all four feet off the ground while galloping, finally settling one of the great debates of the time. Muybridge went on to take more than 100,000 photographs of people and animals in motion, which he displayed in books and lectures, and he even invented a device to display them called a zoopraxiscope that projected these images rapidly in sequence onto a screen, making the zoopraxiscope effectively the very first animated GIF projector. From there, the methods of capturing these so-called moving pictures and replaying them only continued to improve. In the late 1800s, the film camera was invented, which used a long strip of photographic negatives called film stock and rapidly exposed one image at a time in sequence. These images could then be played back rapidly to create the illusion of motion through the use of a projector, which was basically just a film camera in reverse. Early films, or movies as they came to be called, were very similar to stage plays. The film camera was kept in a wide, stationary shot, and all the action took place over just one continuous shot. And just like in a live stage production, the audience was free to look at any part of the scene that they wanted to. Later, artists like Georges Méliès began to realize that there was no need to replay the film at the exact same time and speed and in the same sequence that it was recorded. He began to experiment with jumping forward in time to make objects appear and disappear. Soon it was discovered that putting two shots next to each other in sequence would create a logical connection between those shots in the viewer's mind, which is called juxtaposition. And so, instead of recording an entire movie in strict chronological order, it was discovered that scenes could be filmed at different times and in different locations and then combined together later in the process that became known as editing. This was initially done by physically cutting apart the celluloid film stock and then splicing it together with another piece of film stock. That is, until the invention and eventual widespread adoption of television and video in 1948. Now to be clear, the terms film and video are often used interchangeably nowadays, but make no mistake, they are not the same thing. Unlike film, Video is an electronic signal. A video camera will convert the image that it sees into a fancy modulating electronic signal. This signal can then be interpreted back into an image by a CRT television set, I mean back in the days, and even amplified and broadcast as a television signal to be read by TVs across the country. Fun fact, by the way, because there was no way to record these signals for later playback until the invention of videotape in 1951, early television broadcasts had to be watched at the time they were being broadcast. Now the exact method of accomplishing this recording is very sciencey and technical, but that's a subject for another day. The important thing to know is that videotape can be erased and reused to record an entirely new video and film stock cannot. Once it's exposed, it's done. What you probably don't know is that it was possible to cut and splice videotape in the same way that film stock could be cut and spliced. However, these cuts had to be done using a microscope because they needed to be extremely precise so they wouldn't ruin the video signal. This was a huge pain in the neck, figuratively and probably literally, and so not much video editing was really done this way. Later, advancements in videotape technology allowed for machines that could pause, play, and record from one videotape to another without the need to physically cut the tape. This allowed for fully electronic editing, which was easier, faster, and less error-prone. 
And that's actually how video was done for decades until well into the computer age. Now some work was done going back to the 70s on digital video storage and editing using mainframe computers and hard drive packs the size of washing machines. But it wasn't until 1989 when the Avid One fully digital NLE, that is a computer-based non-linear editing system was released, that it finally became for real. And while the Avid One had some initial limitations, resolution, frame rate, and content length being among them, it improved rapidly and ushered in the modern age of completely digital video editing with binary strings of zeros and ones stored on hard drives or today even SSDs at full quality for real-time editing and output. So today in 2015, Avid is still around and better than ever, but there are plenty of other non-linear video editing software tools as well. At Linus Media Group, we use Premiere and it's fine mostly. And these digital NLEs allow for video to be edited faster and less expensively than ever before without compromising quality. Speaking of doing things without compromising quality, Video Blocks, <coughs> excuse me, Video Blocks provides affordable premium stock video and they've been doing it since 2011. They operate on a subscription based unlimited library service model and they add new footage to the library twice per month. It includes over 10 million dollars worth of footage, uh, After Effects templates and motion backgrounds and everything in Video Blocks' unlimited library is 100 percent royalty free and yours to use for both personal and commercial projects. In a recently launched new members only video marketplace, this is actually pretty cool, clips from contributors around the world are available only to Videoblocks subscribers. So contributors on that marketplace actually keep 100% of all sales as commission and Videoblocks takes no cut since the marketplace is members only and they're already taking the subscription revenue from everyone. So everybody's, everybody's happy. There's already 1,500 plus artists with more than 200,000 new clips in the few months since the marketplace launched. So if all that sounds pretty darn good and you're sitting there going, well, gee, Linus, that sounds great, except it probably costs like $10,000 a year. No! There's good news for you. Access to the marketplace and library comes at only $99 per year. And if you use our link, which you can find in the description box below, and if you sign up during the month of December, so do it quickly, you'll get one year of video blocks for only $49, a savings of 50 bucks. So to put that into context, one clip of stock footage similar to those found on video blocks is worth like 50 bucks. So if you use the service once, you paid for itself. Or it paid for itself. You paid for it. Well, you did pay for it. Anyway, you get my point. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you disliked it, well, hit the dislike button, I guess. Um, what else do we have? Right, leave a comment if you have suggestions for future Fast as Possibles, and don't forget to get subscribed so you don't miss any of our future videos.